Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today's tutorial I'm going to show you how I went about painting this cute little brown dog here in the uh, image. The background actually changes uh, halfway through the painting. I wasn't too happy with it so you'll kind of see that later on as it magically changes from black to green. As for the dog itself, I'm starting with my darkest values and I'm just starting to map out where those values are going to be. Uh, just some rough texture, rough shadows, uh, and that's basically what I'm doing here. I'm using a medium sized flat brush and some black mixed with a little bit of burnt umber for my darkest values. Uh, and this is how I pretty much start all my animal paintings. I map all the values out first. You can mess up your textures, you can mess up your colors, but as long as you have your values correct, then you'll have no problem with a realistic looking painting. I am then go in with some pure burnt umber for my mid-tones. The mid-tones are just going into the places that are not the brightest and not the darkest. They're just kind of a filler for right now until I can get the texture on, which will be the next layer after my values. And then finally uh, mixing a little bit of white into my brown just to give my lighter value here. It's not the brightest, I want to save my absolute brightest colours and uh, layers for the final highlights of the painting. Then I go in with a brick brush as well uh, and just start to add in some oranges and also some more of that light brown to start to build up the texture. As you can see, I've decided to put the light coming from the left side of the canvas, so that's pretty much how I'm going to be doing my light source here. Really quickly, I just want to throw it out there that I have a mailing list that you can sign up for. This mailing list allows me to offer my most avid fans and collectors a more in-depth look into my work as an artist. I offer exclusive discounts, invites, announcements, course updates, art business advice, and even a monthly newsletter. So click on my website in the description below to join it and check everything else out that I have to offer. So continuing on with the rake brush, I'm just using it now to add in the texture or the, one of the first texture layers I should say uh, throughout the dog's body, mostly concentrating it um, in the areas that I want to really accentuate. Uh, when you're painting fur, you want to make sure you leave some gaps uh, and especially uh, add some clumps and things like that in where they are a little bit darker, where the shadows get um, pretty dark too. I'm then going in with a lighter shade of brown, just mixing a little bit of white in with that colour that I was using and going in and just kind of, again, making those clumps pop out more. I'm also going back in with that really dark value just to really push those darks into the background while using the lights to pull those to the front and really make things pop here. Again, switching back to that light to start to add in more defined texture throughout the dog's body and face. You'll see more on his body what I mean by the clumps. You can see those definitive uh, clumps of fur that really make the dog come to life more. Now originally I had this idea for lanterns uh, hanging in the background and the foreground of the dog but eventually I just couldn't really get them to look right and I wasn't ultimately happy with the concept so I decided to change it up. I've actually been wanting to experiment with more of an abstract feel with my pieces recently and so I decided to give it a go with this piece and kind of let loose a little and be a little bit more free-flowing and uh, not afraid to just go for it. I decided to add some oranges in the top left corner as well as a few other elements throughout the painting. Uh, and as you can see, I used some paint pens to add some abstract markings just around the place. 
And overall, I was very happy with how the painting turned out, and I'm really enjoying exploring this more abstract side of my work. I've found recently that a lot of my work has become very stiff, um, it's very clean edged, it's very neat, it's too perfect and I want to get back to that sort of artsy, uh, sort of messy, if you like, roots and just really uh, bring out the artsy vibes that I feel like I'm missing in my pieces. Here you can see me just going back over some of that fur texture, redefining some of the edges of the dog that got a bit lost when I changed up the background using that rake brush to add in and accentuate the fur. Now I'm going with some glazing medium. I love glazing medium. It really adds depth and color back into your paintings if you find they get a bit washed out through the texture phase. So I'm glazing in some burnt umber as well as some cadmium orange and also a little bit of cadmium yellow just to give a glow to the dog's face. I'm also going to go ahead and do a little bit of a wash of the greens and blues in the dog because I really liked how the dog almost looked like he was fading out from that background too. I will add that in a few uh, layers from now. I'm just going back in with some of that light brown and just kind of toning down some of that orange on his face. I felt it was a little too bright. And that's sort of the beauty about acrylics is that you can go back and forth between your light and dark layers. You can cover things up, you can start over, or you can just change it as much and as often as you need to. Uh, just because A, acrylics dry so fast, so you can work quite quickly with them, and B, is that they're a thicker paint, so it's much easier to layer and to cover up your uh, mistakes or errors with it. I decided to add some candles, um, just again trying to go with a bit more of a free, free flow and uh, just a bit more of a random uh, feel to this painting, um, just to let out the artsy side a little bit more. I'm using my rake brush again to add a much paler uh, form of brown paint here to uh, really bring out the individual brush strokes of the fur texture. And now I'm going in with a smaller sort of filbert brush to add in the nose mixing between a light gray and a darkish gray and black. And just kind of paying attention a little bit to a reference photo here because again the lighting is very different from what I am painting. So I have to make sure that what I'm painting is balanced compared to um, what I'm, I'm looking at in my reference photo because that's unfortunately something that can get a little tricky when you're using reference photos is they don't always match up with your light source that you're painting in your picture. I go in with a detail brush to add details and some texture onto the nose and a little bit on sort of the lip that's exposed on the dog. And then I start to fill in my eyes by first lining them with some black and then filling them in a little bit so that I can see where the shape of the eyeball is before then adding in some orange for the center of his eye. I decided to go for orange to kind of tie in the oranges that are at the top of the painting. And right now I'm just kind of letting the eyes dry. Whilst they are drying I can glaze the nose so it sits better with the rest of his face. And then I'm just adding in little highlights, a bit of yellow, a little bit of brown to kind of shade the eyeballs and letting them dry in between as I go. Putting in his pupils and making sure they're even and matched up. And then adding a few details to the lip that's exposed um, with some white and light grey paint. I decided to change up the nose because I wasn't happy with how the lighting looked. I made the front of the nose darker to make it more realistic to how the light source would have been in my painting. Before then adding some brighter details and lining the eyes with these highlights and white dots in the center and also just adding a little bit of fur around the edges and then correcting a few of the areas in the face that I just felt were a bit too flat so I decided to go in and add a few more of the darker patches around the eyes to give it more of a three-dimensional look as well as on the nose and just around the place. 
and I also filled out his face a little bit. I felt that he was looking a bit gaunt, so I decided to really fill out the face with the fur texture, just using a rake brush to uh, go in and add a lighter fur over the top. And really all it is now is just correcting details and uh, making sure it makes sense and make sure it looks natural and uh, just correcting anything that just looks odd. I added a few little um, really light strands of fur around the eyes as I find that it really helps them stand out a little bit. And then just fluffing him up in a few areas before getting on with the rest of the painting. Uh, I wanted to keep a looser feel so I was really trying to stay abstract. I was trying to keep myself in check and not try and perfect everything because I have a bad habit of doing that. I want everything to be perfect and clean edged and that is not the goal of this painting. So I'm really just kind of loosely um, kept a lot of that looseness in it but also I perfected only a little bit. I did a few leaves, I made sure the oranges looked nice but I left a lot of the leaves kind of random and abstract and I also decided towards the end to incorporate some more of the uh, marker paint pen thing and uh, I think it looks really nice, it adds an abstract element to the painting. Here I'm lighting my candles and I'm just giving a little bit of a yellow glow to the actual uh, wax. I also decided towards the end of the painting I wanted another element in this uh, picture. I decided to paint a red flower just in the corner here and also to include some abstract petals and sort of markings that looked like they were tied to the flower or could have been flowers in the distance and I really like how this came out. I think it just adds a whole other uh, element or dimension to it. So I'm adding some highlights to the flowers and the petals just to make them really pop out. I actually really like the look of the darker outside of the flower and then sort of a whiter or a cleaner inside. Uh, I think it looks really pretty that way. I think I might have overworked it a little bit but I'm actually really happy with how this painting came out as a whole. I'm just really trying to not be overly perfect and not uh, want to make everything clean edged and, and perfect and all that. It's actually quite a challenge to do when you've been painting uh, so clean for so long really. But uh, this is pretty much the final painting. I finished it off with uh, adding some crayon whiskers in for the dog and I just like how thin these marks look, that's why I tend to use them for whiskers. And then finishing off the oranges with that paint pen as I mentioned earlier and also doing the same thing for the candle flames. I just really like the neon colour look right now. And that's pretty much this painting. I actually haven't painted many dogs and I'm, I'm a bit of a cat person. So it was definitely interesting to um, paint a dog because they have such a different face structure from cats and uh, it was definitely a challenge to learn how to make them look very realistic and I said before I really want to branch out and make my work a little more loose and not so perfect and so I think that's definitely a direction I'm taking my work on from now on because I actually really love this painting and I really enjoyed the process. I kind of fell in love with this painting as soon as I changed the background and kind of knew why I wanted oranges and like candles and things in it. Um, so it's actually one of the few paintings in a while that I felt really really proud of and just really enjoy looking at and hopefully uh, I can find him a forever home to go into. Still coming up with a name for him but I overall am just really happy with it and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will catch you all next time.
interested in purchasing this piece or any of my paintings, you can head over to my website and see what I currently have available. I take payment plans using Afterpay or I can manually set them up for you using Square. You can also find prints, mini originals, ornaments and other products in my Etsy store and you can find that link in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram and join my mailing list.